guess on exactly why we saw that turnaround. It seemed like we got a little bit overexcited when we got those results out from Westfield and Commonwealth Bank this morning. Uh, Commonwealth up as much as 2% at one stage, but it finished the session up just 1%. Why do you think we, we flicked back to the negative territory? I think initially the market was supported by those strong results coming through from the big blue chips like Commonwealth Bank and Westfield. Um, but in the end, it was really the miners which dragged our market lower. And there are signs of fatigue in risk assets. It does look like global growth is slowing down and that's being reflected in commodity prices, especially iron ore prices, which we are seeing at a 31 month low. So if we break it down and have a look at the material space, some of the single commodity miners were the worst hit today. We saw Fortescue down by 4.1%. Rio Tinto was down by 2.5% or $1.42, but it did go ex-dividend 68.5 cents. So that explains around about half of the move that we saw in Rio. But instead, we did see this move back into defensive. Telstra is coming up with a dividend. It goes ex-dividend on Monday. And we also saw some strength in the healthcare space. Having said that, there were a number of companies on the ASX that saw 52-week highs today. And they include the likes of IINet, GPT, Grain Corp, as well as Primary Healthcare. So there are stocks out there doing extremely well. In fact, if we have a look at stocks which re reached all-time record highs today, car sales and web debt, debt continue to do quite well. So it does look like investors favoring some of those defensive high-yielding stocks. And they've been the, our best performing today with some of them reaching 52-week highs. About the net interest margin because this probably wasn't quite what we were looking for down three basis points to 2.09 and interestingly we didn't get any analysis in terms of this yesterday from uh, National Australia Bank so I, I just wanted to get your take on this and and how I guess I mean this is a measure a key measure of profitability on loans what you made of this read we have seen funding costs under pressure and I guess that's a reflection of competition out there for customer deposits as well as customer loans out there in the marketplace. So it is a difficult trading environment for the banks and I think in the face of that Commonwealth Bank has come out with a very credible result. We know that the fourth quarter trading conditions were tough and when we look at Commonwealth Bank it is a domestically focused bank so it is focused mainly on Australia and that's where uh, I guess its core business comes from and it has been a tough environment. We've heard commentary from some some of the property companies are like uh, Stockland saying that even though we've had the interest rate cuts in Australia that the residential property market remains uh, quite depressed over here. So a very tough environment and yet despite that tough environment we have seen Combank coming out and beating expectations. The consensus was for cash profit at $7.09 billion. They've come in at $7.11 billion and of course a key reason why investors invest in the banks uh, is that big uh, dividend and of course we saw that dividend also beating expectations coming in at $1.97. Return on equity of 18.6%, so looking quite healthy there. So altogether, good result. The net interest margin, as you mentioned, Kate, coming under pressure. But I think that's just a reflection of the competition that we're seeing, especially in that deposit space. This was a good one today. Profits up 31% and hitting $800 million, a great one for the Lowy boys. I just want to get your, your take on this one. I mean, it's weathered one of the most severe downturns in sales that we've seen in the retail environment in Australia. What did you make of the result? A fantastic result coming in ahead of expectations. So $800 million, although revenue was down by 10.7%, and that was just reflective of the large no amount of assets that Westfield sold uh, during the period. We've seen about $4.8 billion worth of asset sales, and really that allows Westfield to accelerate its development pipeline, which it does very well. And that's taking a, taking a property and then building up a shopping centre and then selling it. And that's really where the growth in Westfield comes from. About 80% of income still comes from its property portfolio and that's uh, that's uh, t getting the rents from those sh shopping centres and I guess the outstanding part of uh, that result was the US uh, sales part so we did see a strong result from the US which is great to see uh, one of the catalysts that we are watching for in FY13 is um, 
uh, the, the UK business. If we have a look at the UK shopping centre, some of the first leases come up for renewal. So some strong sales there should make it a good time for Westfield to be renewing some of the leases at Westfield London. So we'll be watching that one closely. And of course, uh, the joint venture with AMP where they are trying to reshuffle their portfolios. We'll be watching to see which shopping centres uh, Westfield takes under its belt. Some of the WA ones would be attractive as well as Wringer Mall in New South Wales. So um, lots happening in terms of Westfield revenue was down by 10.7%, but that was reflective of the asset sales and hopefully also reflective of uh, more uh, good developments to come to help the capital growth side of the equation.